I'm joined live now by Daniel Dumbacher, CEO of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Thank you so much for being here with us. So, you know, from where I was watching, it seemed like a, a picture-perfect re-entry and splashdown. Nothing, of course, is simple when you're hurtling through uh, Earth's atmosphere at thousands of miles an hour. Uh, talk us through what you saw. Well, like you saw, like you said, it was it looked really, really well done and everything seemed to work according to plan uh, just as they wanted. And the reentry looked good. The shoot deployment all looked good. The splashdown, the recovery uh, right per plan. And, and that's the way you like to have it. This, it. The SpaceX team has done a fantastic job. All right. So so concretely, what happens now next for the astronauts? They'll uh, get them out of the capsule. Uh, then they'll on, on the boat get them back, get them back to land. Uh, give them a chance to to get uh, reacclimated uh, to 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 one g gravity. Uh, and then there, I'm sure there will be a lot of interviews, a lot of discussion about what worked, what didn't work, what can we learn, what can we do better next time. And as they go through all of that, uh, obviously a, a large amount of celebration for the historic accomplishment of the Polaris Dawn mission. Yeah, compared to some of the astronauts uh, on the International Space Station, they didn't spend a lot of time in space, but still there are effects on the human body. Walk us through that. What will they be testing them for? Well, and like, like you pointed out, every mission is different. Uh, they're going to be particularly interested uh, since they went outside the Van Allen belt uh, and the radiation protection to see what kind of radiation environment they might have been subjected to and, and what the reaction to that will be. Obviously, with the uh, opening up of the spacecraft and the spacewalk, uh, any effects from that, uh, and and see how it compares to the rest of the information we have from all the years of space flight. Did we see anything new? Did, we, uh, did SpaceX learn anything? Is there uh, some new information that we can gather out of this mission? Yeah, so on that, I mean, it was, uh, you know, the, the major accomplishment, of course, was the spacewalk. Uh, what do you think came out of that? What do you think that they will learn from, from that experience? Well, number one, they, they learned an awful lot as they were preparing, uh, designing the system, operating the system, the training of everyone from the ground all the way through the astronauts uh, for that mission. And then uh, they'll be able to stand back and, and look at the, with a little bit of objective eyes, be able to look back at how did it all work and are there any changes we need to make, any improvements that need to be made? And, and that's just the natural evolution. Uh, this is a historic accomplishment. Uh, they wanna, every mission that you, that you take up, up there, you wanna learn and see if there's anything new because human beings, uh, despite all the flights since 19, since the Gemini, Mercury, Apollo days, uh, every mission is a learning mission. And we want to learn as much as we can uh, in preparation because as, as humans extend the neighborhood further and further out, we will, we will continually be learning. That's why we call it exploration. Yeah, and, and on that, uh, the fact that it was so far, and you mentioned Apollo, this uh, uh, was the furthest uh, that humans have traveled since the 1972 Apollo mission to the moon. So uh, what else came from this trip, do you think? Well, one of the big things that comes from this trip is the, is the clear demonstration that we are evolving from the government doing all of it and and being uh, the the prime driver to now that we understand physically how to go about these kind of things and, and do this kind of exploration, private enterprise taking it over uh, and extending uh, extending it further and further. And, and with this private enterprise mission like Polaris Dawn, uh, we're going to eventually we'll be opening up space uh, to everyone. And 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 this is the beginning of it. We're at the we're at the very beginning of of what's going to be a long, fruitful, hopefully uh, economically advantaged uh, opportunity to to extend the human neighborhood further into space. Yeah, and in terms of the the future of commercial space flights, it's it's certainly a successful counterpoint to to some of the problems that we've been seeing with the the, the Boeing program. Well. Every mission is different and every system is different and uh, each one's learning and 
You know, there were, as you go through test flights, you will find in, in every system on its initial test flights has, has some kind of challenge to, to overcome. Uh, and, and we will continue to learn from each of these. Uh, Boeing will continue to learn. NASA will continue to learn. Uh, SpaceX will continue to learn. Uh, and, and we'll continue to make it better. We rough, Kind of a rough analog is that the commercial space industry today is in a similar state of evolution as what commercial air travel was back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s So uh, of the previous century. So uh, lots of learning to come, uh, but it's and it'll take time. But we will eventually open up the o open up the space neighborhood for everyone. Yeah, we're still uh, a, a far away from that, but it, it was notable that their mission marked the the highest number of humans in Earth's orbit. So, what does that say about the the renewed interest in space right now at this moment? Well. I that's one of the great advantages with what you see with the SpaceX Polaris Dawn mission, with all the work on the International Space Station, the uh, great emergence of this private enterprise space economy uh, is you're seeing the beginnings of human beings living and working in space. Uh, and it'll eventually will go to the moon, will extend it further to Mars and into deep space. SpaceX wants to put millions of people on Mars, uh, and and we're at the beginning, uh, and it's rather exciting to be here uh, and to be part of the part of the generation that is going to to get this all started and and in preparation for generations to come. We just uh, want to signal to the to viewers we're seeing live pictures right now the Polaris Dawn uh, capsule just being uh, loaded onto the recovery vessel. Uh, so just fascinating to see this process as they're uh, they're doing that. Um, you know, just take us through what you think again will happen right now with this uh, with this capsule that they're they're loading on to the to the recovery vessel. Oh, uh, SpaceX will certainly take that capsule home. They will uh, look at uh, at the state of it. How you know? How does it? How did it perform? Uh, is there anything we need to prepare? Uh, I would suspect there will be a discussion about: Do we reuse it or do we save it for historical purposes? That's all. That's all SpaceX's call down the road. But again, this uh, I, I am confident that the engineers and Everyone at SpaceX will be going through the hardware, looking for what they can learn and how they can make the next one better uh, and safer. Yeah, and we're just waiting for the, the, the hatch to open. That'll be a, a, certainly a, a significant moment. In the meantime, you were talking about uh, the future of deep space exploration. Uh, and, and, you know, people have been talking sort of about how these uh, new design suits that they were wearing might, uh, might one day, some iteration of those, we might see those on Mars. Uh, how far away are we from that? Well, we have a, a, a fair uh, amount of time and effort to get to Mars. It's not a trivial matter by any sense. Uh, going to the moon is uh, a quarter of a million miles and getting to Mars is 30 million miles plus. Uh, so it's quite a different uh, long trip to get there uh, and also a different environment to live in. Uh, and it, it's gonna be all dependent upon uh, the steps that we take along the way and how fast we progress through that, uh, along with where the investment comes from. And, and it, it'll take time, but I am confident that the, that the children in, in classes today from kindergarten through high school are going to be the generation that, that take us to Mars and, and even beyond. Yeah, it's so interesting. Uh, we saw uh, Sarah Gillis, you know, playing uh, playing the violin uh, in space and seeing, you know, kids sort of uh, uh, in orchestras playing along with her. I mean, how much more interest are you sensing right now in the next generations? It, it kind of waned for, for a couple of decades there. Do you sense that there's more excitement around space now? Oh, there certainly is more excitement. When I, when we go around and we work with uh, teachers and students in kindergarten through high school, as well as uh, in, even into to the university level and beyond the, the enthusiasm, the uh, passion for uh, taking advantage of these kinds of steps that you saw taken today and over the last several days. 
uh, it is growing. Uh, more and more people want to be involved, and uh, and it's people of of all colors, of all economic backgrounds. This is in, this is inspirational to everyone, and uh, I think it's uh, it bodes well for the generations to come. As as I see it, uh, working with the students uh, in the elementary school to the university level, uh, all extremely bright, all extremely passionate. Uh, and I'm very confident that the future will is is extremely bright for uh, what we're going to see the next generations accomplish. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's and I know they are. They certainly talk about it. Uh, I get calls all the time from students of uh, from across the age group and they just uh, they're ready to go. Yeah. Well, listen, as we wait for the hatch to open uh, on the Polaris Dawn that's just been uh, loaded, loaded onto the recovery vessel, we'll leave it there right now, but we'll certainly uh, rejoin uh, when we see uh, more action there. Uh, really appreciate you talking through us all of this, uh, through all of this uh, historic moment. Daniel Dumbacher, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Kim. Have a great day. All right.